Thanks for staying tuned to your station, the African Event Television, and welcome to your program, Security Watch Africa. On this channel and on this program, we'll bring you every information you need to keep your life safe and secure wherever you are in Africa. This is your program. Yeah, first, before we begin, I want to say a posthumous happy birthday to our mentor, our, uh, the, the, the Chairman Emeritus Founder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course, I said because he's also a board member, he's a member of the Board of Security Watch Africa Initiative. I mean, German Emeritus, founder of Dark Communications Limited, owners of Red Power and AIT, the station that is the window to Africa. It's, um, we know you are there with the Lord. We say happy birthday to you, Chairman. Um, deserve, uh, yesterday was uh, the first uh, annual Diamond Lecture, yeah. posthumous. Uh, but I know that uh, if he was here physically with us, it would have been uh, quite exciting. But I know he watched and followed the whole activity from in heaven with the Lord. Happy birthday to you, Chairman. We love you so much. We know that the Lord loves you more. But we wish you are still here with us. But you are there with the angels watching over us and ensuring that your baby, your people are safe and secured. Yes, uh, that brings me to what has been happening in the area of uh, the security from the security situation in the northern Nigeria. Uh, for about three weeks now, the northern, most part of Ni northern Nigeria, 70 percent of northern Nigeria have been having total blackout, no electricity, and it's been a big troubling situation, and it's threatening security the more in that situation. During the week, uh, the, trans <coughs> the organization that is in charge with regulating uh, electricity in Nigeria, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, the officers gave an excuse, which I, I beg to disagree, that uh, because um, the line that uh, transmit power to the northern Nigeria was tampered with, and on the advice of the National Security Advisor, um, the place is inaccessible because of security, so it couldn't be fixed. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe that that came from the National Security Advisor because I know that uh, the security forces are ready and willing to provide the support to ensure that all parts of Nigeria is secured. So um, whatever be the reason, particularly talking about the Shiroro Mando transmission line uh, that has been bad for some time now, I think that that excuse is very lean, or as far as I'm concerned. Uh, security forces are available to do the needful. So away from that, uh, we'll go with the program today. Today, we, we had an exclusive interview with the Chief of Defense Staff, uh, General Christopher Gwambi Musa. We'll be bringing you that interview where he spoke on a number of issues concerning the armed forces of Nigeria. And we'll bring a security analyst who will be looking at the views of the Chief of, Def Chief of Defense Staff. Uh, so sit back as we we'll bring you that interview, but that will be after this promo for the 18th Africa Security Watch Awards and Conference. It's the very first time I'll be so honored outside Nigeria, and I want to thank uh, Security Watch Africa for having eyes for details. Some of us doing the same kind of job. Uh, um, for me to have been selected as the best crime buster is not easy. In global security, yeah, we'd never be over stressed, which is also why I like a summit like this. In as much as I'm a very accomplished man today, uh, based on the fact that uh, if my efforts, my hard work, commitment, and dedication to duty is recognized beyond the borders of this country, I think you know I have every reason to be happy. Hey, I want to come the organizers of this program. Uh, it is a laudable one and um, it's just to motivate um, officers within all the African nations. I express my appreciation for this very important award given to the Nigerian Navy and my humble self. I must commend the Security Watch Africa for what they have been doing to bring all African security officers together. Uh, the marching order for uh, 
um, making the Northwest more safer. Um, Nigerians, the results came quickly, and um, Nigerians were quite impressed. But some want to know what is updated in this situation over there now. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, like we said, we observed that our operations, because we're operating two, we had two operations within the Northeast that were operating independently, and then we felt that was wrong. So uh, just like we have in the Northeast, now we have merged them all together under one theater commander. So we have a theater commander. We have Sector 1, the GOC 1 div, with uh, the commander Sector 1 and the land company commander. We have the GOC 8 div, who is the Sector 2. Uh, and he's also the land company commander. So with the, with the joint tax force now in place, all other company commanders are also coming. We're also building the intelligence fusion center so that all the intelligence agencies also will be together. So now the entire North uh, West is working in unison. So all our assets, all our equipment will work together so that any plans we're doing, everybody's aware of what's going on because we're working together and that makes it better. And uh, the awareness, because we have uh, actually uh, appealed to Nigerians, uh, you know, sensitize them on the importance to support the security forces, and that support has been coming. And that's where you see much improvement, uh, other than how it used to be before. So we will continue to do, to do that, because we know it's only when we work together as a team that we can succeed. Yeah, because I, I wanted to talk more about that. Um, uh, you know, getting this operation done, we have uh, some communities who have one of daily activities other business or mm -hmm. social with this um, bandits yeah. and all that. Is that a way to get... Yeah, yeah it's always, that's company? why we always want to appeal, that people, you know, sometimes people think uh, you are trading with them and you make more money. Because most times what they sell, if you are able to get things across to them, they buy it maybe almost 10 times the, the amount of normal sales. So people think they are trading, but I tell you that it's just, you know, it's like you're holding the tiger by the tail. It will always come after you. When you grace, when you support monsters, they will come always. And it has, it has happened over and it will continue to happen. So we want to appeal to those ones, thinking that they're making business. One, they should understand that whatever profit they're making is blood money. People are being killed. Monies are being stolen. People are being uh, kidnapped. Ransoms are being paid. So that money is blood money. If we get them, we're going to treat them just like the bandits or the criminals. And they should also understand, if it happens they to die, they should understand that they also, God is going to ask them for all they, they, they do, they've done because they've played a part in supporting uh, acts of banditry and, and terrorism. So it's important that they stop. Once they see them, they should avoid them, they should report quickly, and then action will be taken. Yeah. Generally, throughout the operation, um, what, what, what will we be telling Nigerians? Uh, what assurance will we be giving Nigerians? Uh, I know that most areas, not west, not east, is a bit is settled, um, south, south is being taken care of. But general, what would you? Yeah, I think our appeal is for them, to, for Nigerians to understand that the challenges we are facing is a Nigerian challenge. So it requires all Nigerians to play their role. Everybody has a responsibility to ensure that we do not allow bandits, terrorists, criminals live within us. Because it is if we give them support that they can thrive. If we don't, they cannot survive. And that's why it's important that once we see anything, we should report quickly. We should not give them any support, either by giving them food, giving them logistics, funding, or whatever support. We should make the place untenable for them. They will clearly fizzle out quickly. Yeah, some of them will say that uh, sometimes they are being um, threatened. Uh, they pay taxes to these people just for protection and all that. Yeah, yeah, like we said, you know, the security forces cannot be everywhere. And that's what we try to encourage communities that have the capacity to be able to also uh, stand in and make sure those guys don't, you can report, you don't have to show yourself. They are within you, make find ways of getting these messages across to us, we will take action as quickly as possible. So that's why it's important. Um, like I said, and like you know too, in the Northeast, we use uh, civilian JTF a lot. So we're also looking at the uh, idea of partnering with the youths that we know are honest, are dedicated, are committed in shock. So all we need from them is to give us additional information, build that capacity so that they can hold their communities, make sure that nobody comes to dislodge their communities, working together with the government. I think that's very important. Now that you mentioned civilian JTF, I don't know whether they judge uh, JTF. Maybe there's something we can draw, lessons we can draw from that. Somebody once uh, tweeted, tweeted that, um, that there are over 50,000 of civilian JTF were engaged and about 20,000 um, arms were in their hands and they've not been recovered. 
No, it's, no, it's not. It's not uh, what we do is that what they are holding is probably pump action, which is normally every civilians are allowed to hold that, and that is just to defend the community they are in, okay. not to allow anybody that can hold as deterrence for a while before the main troops come in, and so that's what we are trying because we cannot be everywhere. Like I said, the entire north north uh, west alone is over two hundred thousand square kilometers. Yeah. It is massive, and then sharing a common border again with. Uh, with Niger, uh, so it makes it, it makes it so. We need to have extra support that will ensure that we're able to come in as quickly as possible uh, to, to deal with the threat. Okay. Finally, on this, this is um, recently some Nigerians, even to the sense of what will you be saying? It is a no-no. For us, it is a no-no. We stand by democracy. Democracy, for us, we thrive better during democracy. If it's a military regime, so many restrictions are placed on us because the government, they're knowing they're illegal, will always think that the next military regime wants to take over from them. But in a democratic setting, we are free. We are allowed to do our training. We are allowed to do a lot of things. Our welfare is a lot better and all this. So for us, it's a no-no. We want to appeal to all Nigerians to stop doing that. Uh, for us, those ones doing that don't mean us well. It is for their own selfish interests. And they should understand that it's treasonable. And for treason, if you are caught, the laws are always there. The military stands by the president. The military stands by democracy, all true. And that's what we'll continue to defend. Okay. I, I said finally, let me commit me to just because I see something. You have passion for sports. Mm -hmm. and Nigeria will be hosting the, yes. the military games. The military game. games, Can yes. Can you say something about that? No, fantastic, yes. Uh, the essence of military games, like we say, it's been a long while that Nigeria has actually uh, hosted any big military, uh, um, big uh, sports, sporting events. This is an opportunity for all Nigerians to come and see their own military also performing. Uh, we've started training yesterday. I was at the stadium to talk to the athletes. Uh, they are all on ground. They are all with high spirits. So far, almost uh, 30 countries have to find the intention of attending all military games, and they are eager to come and win. So Nigerians must come and support their own team. Uh, it's going to start on the 18th to 30th of November. So we're looking forward to that. It's a great opportunity for us to project Nigeria once again to the limelight for people to know that, look, Nigeria is safe. You know, other places you see the news, they always give the impression that Nigeria is dangerous. If you go, they are killing, they are kidnapping. No. But once people understand that all these ones are just, you know, hype of uh, fake news and false news, it's important that we project Nigeria in good light. Nigeria is stable. Abuja is doing very well. It's a new capital. Uh, it's a wonderful place to be, and so we're also encouraging, um, we're happy to host Africans in our own country, and uh, we're hosting to win. We want to also win. As everybody knows, Nigeria, we're good, we good at sports, so we want to project that quick, quickly. So it's going to unite us. Um, we, firstly, we, the teams together, then African military is an opportunity again for us to interact and know ourselves better. Because most times, it's not only when we meet during war operations. Now we meet in a very cordial atmosphere for us to share friendship and enjoy the moment. Welcome back. Yes, uh, you, we had uh, that interview by the Chief of Defense Staff speaking on um, what the Armed Forces of Nigeria is doing to secure Nigeria. Yes, we have a guest uh, via Zoom uh, who has been following what's, how the program is going, talking about uh, uh, the man I respect so much. I, I can't stop saying that, talking about uh, Dennis Amakri. Dennis Amakri uh, is a, a retired deputy director. He was a, a deputy director with the Department of State Services. And now he's supposed to be retired, but he's not tired. Very still very active in security. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you join us um, once again, sir. All right. Uh, I, I think. Thank you. Thank uh, you. But good uh, afternoon. All right. Good afternoon, sir. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I hope you'll, you'll listen to the Chief of Defense Staff there talking on what number of issues. Yes. Okay. Uh, a, a very good interview. A very good interview with him. Okay. And uh, I think that's one thing I like about this uh, Chief of Defense Staff. I think he's forthcoming. And um, unlike uh, previous uh, CDSs. Um, but a nice interview. Okay. Well, what, what would be a take? What particularly drew your attention there? Uh, well, one thing is this. It raised uh, a number of issues. And uh, those issues are uh, something that uh, we have to really look at very well. Uh, one thing I know is that uh, it picked up on the fusion center, the fusion center that uh, they are building. 
Um, I don't know why it is taking them time to do this. I know that one was built in, uh, in the office of the NSA, NSA. In, in, uh, yes, in Abuja. And uh, of course, if you want to build another fusion center in the field, maybe for the northwest or the northeast, then um, we should hurry up and do that. Because you see, without intelligence, it becomes very, very difficult exactly. to you know, um, uh, uh, prosecute this war. And it has taken us real time. It has taken us a very long time in doing it. Okay. All right. Uh, ju just wait a minute. We'll be back uh, with you very shortly, sir. Okay. I am Vice Admiral Awazibari Gambo, retired, the 21st Indigenous Chief of the Naval Staff, Commander of the Order of the Fire Republic, Nigeria. I will be at the 18th African Security Watch Awards and Conference in Doha, Qatar, coming up between 10th to 12th of December 2024. I encourage all and sundry to be there as I will be speaking on leadership, which affects all aspects of human endeavor, though with emphasis on security based on my personal experience. Please be there. Welcome back. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we'll, we are discussing with uh, uh, Mr. Dennis Amakri, um, a security expert, uh, talking about uh, the interview we we just shown uh, with uh, the Chief of Defense Staff of Nigeria. So one of the issues which he raised is the what I could say replicating um, the examples of the junk task force that was set up in for to take care of the northeast uh, which i can say to a large extent is very very successful now they are they are setting up um, they've already established another joint task force uh, called op operation fasan yama uh fasan yama it's uh, not northwest is already s set up uh, the minister of defense was there recently and uh, to activate it uh, do you think this will help uh, working together with the fusion center, it will help to bring the lasting peace we desire in the northeast, northwest. Of course, you know that uh, the chief of defense staff, like I told you earlier, there is something I liked about him uh, when he mentioned that uh, we need this uh, all society approach to deal with this particular security problem that we're having in the country. And I think that is the way to go because we have been, pro you know, proposing that. Uh, for a very long time, but it is the military that will do it. Now, um, the military and, of course, the uh, intelligence agencies, because uh, when you want to have a, an all-society approach, uh, we have the JTF replicated in the northwest. Uh, uh, that is fine. Then you build the fusion center. That is also fine. But one thing, again, is that if to execute the all society approach we need a lot of intelligence officers hmm. in that area in the theater yeah. that way we will be having a lot of information back because when uh, the cds said that uh, if anybody see them you know just report and then the uh, security forces will be there it will not be workable because you see there is no standard or a, um, a, 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 an information system, an information system uh, that you have put in place. There has to be an information intelligence gathering infrastructure yeah. on the ground, yes, to collect. And it is during this standardized or systemic, systemic uh, collection that we can have more success. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, he talked to again about um, <laughs> uh, some people have said uh, very uh, controversial. The some Nigerians uh, feeling that uh, due to the economic challenges in the country and the uh, insecurity that is affecting largely all parts of the country, that military should intervene in political administration. Though he said that Nigerian military is not ready. What would be a take on that? Um, 
I think uh, that is a very, very delicate situation, a very, very delicate situation, and it will depend on how the chief of defense staff manages it, you know, because um, these are people, they are Nigerians too, uh, who are out there uh, requesting for one thing or the other. Why are they doing it? That's the question. The question is uh, that maybe um, why are they doing it? And the answer might be uh, because of the economic situation and poverty level in the country, uh, food security is not uh, achieved and stuff like that. So instead of thinking about uh, the military will not do it because, of course, they prefer uh, democracy to any military uh, regime, I think the best thing is to also, they have the ears of the president. In fact, two people, I think, will look into this. That is the chief of defense staff and the DGSSS uh, should, you know, they have the ears of the president. And then, of course, talk to him, talk truth to power by avoiding politics, because it is the mixture of this politics that is causing the problem. Mm. You know, let them talk to the president and re-strategize among the security agencies. So that way, I think uh, they can take care of those problems. Oh. You know, let us not address the symptoms, but address the root, root cause. Exactly. exactly. I, I think that you are right there. Yes, um, let's come to the point he talked about, because uh, there have been this... Uh, allegations that um, some of these community members uh, are on the side of these uh, bandits and terrorists because uh, they seem to pay tax or pledge allegiance to these bandits because they don't have. And the, the chief said, yes, uh, but people should know that uh, it's, 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 go, it's going to go round. If, if you make them friend today, tomorrow they will come and attack you. How best can we handle those, that's those situations where people trade with them, people do business with these bandits and these terrorists? How can that be cut off? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, like I mentioned earlier, there should be serious intelligence work in the war theaters. Serious intelligence work. And by that, I mean that we're going to flood the area with intelligence officers. And these intelligence officers should be able to collect. That way, they know what is actually happening. There's a criminal economy going on there that is very lucrative, mm. very, very lucrative. The arms trade, you know, the arms trade, even the one for fuel. Look, these people go around in motorcycles, you know, sometimes 100 motorcycles, 50 motorcycles, and these motorcycles don't run on water. You know, so there is somebody supplying them fuel, you know, and if we want to really affect that all society approach, we, our intelligence officers should recruit, recruit agents among these people in such a way that we should be able to collect enough information to, you know, obstruct their plans oh. because this is uh, something that we don't really discuss on television because I, I think uh, the security agencies know exactly what, what to, to do. do. You're right. You know, and they should do it. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. We are, it's been our pleasure having you once again. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Patrick. All right, sir. Thank you. Yes, that uh, that that was uh, Dennis Abakri, Secretary Spart, speaking on. The, the issues relating the armed forces of Nigerian security in Nigeria. It's been a pleasure having the program once again. Uh, if you have enjoyed watching us, join us again next week when we'll bring you another exciting edition. Meanwhile, you can follow us on all our social media platforms. Um, X, that is from our Twitter, uh, where they send us your views. Our Facebook, we are streaming live. And also send us your email via our email address so that we can interact uh, with you and um, take up issues that you bring up. Yeah, until we we'll come over again next week, I say thanks for staying tuned and bye for now. I'm General Christopher Gwabin Musa, the Chief of Defense Staff Armed Forces of Nigeria. I will be the lead speaker during the 18th African Security Watch Awards and Conference, Doha, Qatar, from the 10th to the 12th of December 2024. 
I uh, want to invite all Africans, all friends of Africa, to come and support us. It is an important event where I will be uh, discussing the support and the efforts of the armed forces of Nigeria to bring peace and security in Nigeria, in West Africa and in Africa in general. I am sure you that once Nigeria gets it right, everybody's Africa is going to be well. You are most welcome.